Hello and welcome to Mr Barton's autograph video number 63. Now if you remember last week we created this lovely little autograph page that was used to show that a rectangle only has two lines of symmetry. It has a vertical one and a horizontal one and it certainly doesn't have this dodgy diagonal one that some students seem to think it has. Now that page was all well and good but the problem was if I tried to change my original shape uh, from a rectangle to something like a trapezium nothing else changed because these objects were not dependent on the original. Now I hinted last week that it was possible to make them dependent but a little word of warning here, this is not a particularly easy construction. It's certainly not something that you do in front of your class. However, I think it does have value, not just for demonstrating line symmetry and quadrilaterals, but just for getting to the bottom of how autograph works and how it thinks. And there's a few nice little techniques that you use when creating this that hopefully might stimulate a few more ideas uh, that you may have for constructing other things on autograph. So I'll have a look at it, but as I say, word of warning, it's not the nicest thing you've ever seen. So first thing is you need to get yourself a grid up like that and if you're not sure how to do that just look at last week's video and you'll be fine. And we're going to create ourselves a square, excuse me, but we're not going to create it in the traditional way. I'm going to do it using vectors. So I'm going to pop a point there, I'm in point mode and I'm going to pop a point there. Um, I'm then going to go into select mode and I'm just going to select that point and that point. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a vector. Now I'm going to do that all the way around. So I'm going to pop another point there and I'm going to go that point, that point, right click, vector. Remembering all the time that I'm in whiteboard mode, so I've got to be very careful with my selections. I've got to remember to keep deselecting. Right click, create vector, and select that point, select point, right click, and create vector. Now you might be thinking, what on earth is the point in that? But uh, this means that all the points stay together in a nice little shape. I'll show you how to fill it in in a second. But also, I can now create other lines that are dependent on those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and demonstrate a horizontal line of symmetry. So what I first need is a point, so point mode, pop a point there. And then what I'm going to do, instead of creating a two by a, a line that's two squares across, I'm just simply going to keep that point selected, select this vector, right click, and I'm going to copy that vector. Now whenever I move that, that line increases as well in length. Now what I need now, if I'm going to have a horizontal line of symmetry, I need a, a line down that matches this blue one, but crucially is half the length. So again, let's do a bit of vector work. I'm going to select that point, I'm going to select or excuse me, select that point, you've got to be careful when you're clicking vectors, select that one, right click, and this time I'm going to multiply the vector by 0 0.5, and there I now get a line that's half the length of whatever that one is. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, so I'm going to select that point, I'm going to select that vector. This time, however, I need the vector coming downwards from my line of symmetry, so when I multiply the vector, I'm going to have to multiply it by z minus 0 0.5, and as you can see already the challenge is starting and finally I'm going to select that point and that point and I'm going to join them up with a vector and now what I've got is a shape and another shape that is kind of half its size has, has been sliced down the middle horizontally now let's uh, make these into actual shapes themselves so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select each of the four points in turn and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group them to shape. Now what I can do is I can now go around if I want and hide each of these vectors. So if you just click on the little arrows, there we go, you've got to be pretty accurate with this. Oh, flipping miss, never mind. If I just click off my shape, if I just right click and if I hide objects, I've just missed that last little one, but that's okay. And now let's have a look what happens when I reflect this. So I'm going to pop a point in here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do a horizontal line and I'm now going to reflect that object so I've clicked on the center of the object I've clicked on my line right click and I'm going to do a reflection and the beauty of this now is that if I change this original um, square into say a trapezium then I can see that a trapezium does not have this horizontal line of reflection now you may think well that's a waste of time but I think the construction itself makes it a valid activity and also the kind of finished product is you can get something like this so you can get um, all your four lines of reflection in there and you can show the students quite clearly that if you have a trapezium like that it certainly doesn't have a vertical line of reflection it's not looking good either for a horizontal line of deflect reflection and the diagonals don't work either anyway I'm out of time see you later